Hi, and welcome back to Garden Ninja. Now today's video guide is gonna show you how you can create your own long, deep border for ultimate impact in the garden. And I'm gonna be using a selection of plants and tricks. It means that this border is gonna survive no matter what the weather, and especially if you've got an exposed garden. So if you're looking to pimp up your front garden or create a really immersive border that brings all the attention to your garden, then this is the guide for you. So come on, let's get cracking. If you've not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, hit the red button to subscribe today. Also click the bell for notifications. We'll have access to hundreds of garden design, hints, tips and hacks from me, the Garden Ninja. And best of all, it's free. Now, did you know that the biggest fail that you can make in garden design or when you're laying out your flower beds is the skinny border. And that's the border that's about 40 to 60 centimetres deep. And the reason why it's a fail is that you end up lining everything up in a row that all looks a bit formal, regimented and awkward. And then when the plants die back during the winter, you're left with bare soil. Well, today's guide is going to convince you why you'd be better off going for one really deep, long border than three or four skinny borders. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that on a normal sized lawn so that you can create a border with impact. Now I've got a small lawn here at home, it's a little bit dull and by introducing a long border I can welcome my guests with a really deep rich blue border that follows the path as they walk down which will slow them down before they get to the house. And if you've got a blank lawn then this guide is going to help you transform it by giving it one really deep long border that will draw focus rather than lots of skinny borders around the outside. So the first thing to do is to mark out the border. By using a tape measure, I'm going to make this border 1.8 metres deep, a really deep border, but it will help envelope this part of the garden and give a surround here that will bring it to life and pull focus. Now the biggest garden design trick is to make sure that your borders are at least a metre deep. If you've got the space, like I have, make them 1.8 metres. It means that you can fit in far more plants and arrange them in a much more dynamic layout that will carry through the seasons rather than having your plants lined up in a skinny row that always looks a bit awkward. And believe you me, doing this even in a small garden works wonders. Using spray line allows you to map out the garden and then you can stand back and take a look. It will also give you a better idea of the size of the border. And trust me when I say that although it may look massive, by the time you've got your plants in, it'll start to look smaller. So it's always worthwhile going a little bit bigger for that high impact garden. The next thing we need to do is to remove the turf if you put in this flower bed in a lawn. So get a sharp spade and then it's a case of manually lifting the turf. Now you only want to dig down about an inch and a half to two inches just below the roots of the turf as you can see here. I tend to go along in a line loosening the edge of where I'm going to lift the turf strip. And then the next step is to put the spade underneath and slice it out like you're cutting up pieces of cake. Put it in a wheelbarrow and then compost it by turning it upside down either at the back of a border or next to a compost bin. In six months it will turn into beautiful loam soil. Now that we've got our border dug out and turned over, it's time to add in a really neat edging strip. 
which will mean that when we mow the lawn, we're not having to use a half moon edger to keep edging it. Now I've chosen this Ever Edge Silver Metal Lawn Edge, super easy to fit. And if you haven't already watched my guide on how to fit this, make sure you do that next to give you the guide as to how to do this. It's so simple. All you need is a mallet and a block of wood, and then you pop these in along the edge and clip them together. Super neat and tidy. So now that the board has been dug out and edged, I'm going to start turning it over just lightly with a fork to loosen up the soil that's been kind of compacted under the turf. And then it's time to place the plants. And there's some key tricks I'm going to give you as to how to arrange your plants to make your flower beds and garden designs look absolutely banging. But first, we're going to turn this over. Now the first thing I do with any border is to lay out the shrubs because they're the backbone. A bit like the trees, they're going to give you that all year round structure that you really need in any flower bed. Which is why we always go with a deeper bed rather than skinny beds because we can include shrubs and trees for heightened interest. Now I've got these Karokia, I've also got some beautiful Artemisia which are a native shrub. And I'm just going to weave them through the border before I put anything else in. Stand back, have a look and see, have I got that backbone of structure right? Does it give me something to look at as I walk down the border? If it's all in one area, it'll feel top heavy. If it's too spreadly thin, it'll look bitty. So it's about getting that right balance. And in this bed, I'm probably going to have about seven to nine shrubs to give that backbone throughout the entire bed. So it's time for the fun part, which is moving them around. So here we've got Pinus, we've also got another fir there in the conifer family. So all of a sudden the plant associations are linking together and subconsciously when you see them, they look like they're meant to be there in a group. So if you're picking things like Hebe's or even Viburnums, make sure you have a few others dotted around the garden to make that link so that all the evergreen shrubs and the winter interest connect together. And when it comes to placing the shrubs, don't think that you need to shove them all at the back of the border. Quite often new gardeners get really scared, they put all the shrubs and tall stuff at the back, like it's going to take over. But actually, like this Karokri, you can put it near the front so that when guests pass by, they want to reach out and touch it and interact with it. And I've used them here, both at the back of the border and the front, to kind of give that really dynamic interest in this part of the garden. So don't just think they need to go to the back, play around with them. Now that I've got the shrubs in, it's time to arrange the herbaceous perennials. And I tend to use what I call matrix planting, which looks a bit like the five spots on the five side of a dice. And it means that you can position your plants offset to each other to create a really beautiful mesh network. And you layer them with heights. If you follow that pattern throughout the border, it looks really natural. But let me show you that now. Because if you just line them up in a row, they look really formal, but natural, and it'll draw your attention to all the wrong parts of your flower bed. The next top tip is to always lay your plants out in the pots first before you dig them in and commit them to the ground. It will allow you to move them around, stand back, have a look, and work out if they're in the perfect spot. And the other top garden design tip is to buy plants in either three, five or seven, which brings consistency to the garden. If you're just buying one of this and one of that, it will often look pick and mix. So by having groups of plants either in drifts or in blocks, 
you bring consistency to the garden. Take a look at this garden and have a look at how many repeat plants you can see. Once you've laid all your plants out and you're happy with the position, it's time to get planting and enjoy yourself. Take your time because you're putting loads of hard work and you'll really benefit from just enjoying this whole process and seeing the flower bed come to life. If you've got gardening questions that you need answers for, well why not head over to the Garden Ninja Forum on my blog where you can ask me anything about gardens, plants and garden design. There's a whole army of other garden ninjas there that can help provide answers to your questions and it's a really great way to meet the other ninjas. So head over there now. So there we go, my ultimate guide to avoid the one garden design fail that all of you should be avoiding all the time, which is the skinny border. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel where there are hundreds of garden design hints, tips and hacks to help you make your gardens awesome. And if you've got a friend that's about to dig in a skinny border, make sure you share this video with them so they can avoid the epic fail of a skinny border. I've been Lee Burkill, the Garden Ninja. Happy gardening. <laughs>